Okay, thank you for being here today. I'm Carl Ledgeway. I'm the Dean of the College. I had an opportunity to talk to some of you this morning about some of the exciting things that are happening in the college and most importantly the ways that the college can prepare students for becoming a better person, for developing core liberal arts and science skills, and for finding jobs and being employable. And we talked a little bit about the importance of research for doing that. If I keep going, then I'll just have given my whole talk again, so I'll stop there. Um, but I am really excited about the Crimson and Blue Day today. This has been, um, I've been here almost two years now at this point, and the level of enthusiasm and excitement about the college the families that are here today, the exciting things that we're showcasing downstairs. This is really why we call the college the heart of KU. And we take that really seriously. And you can think of heart both in terms of being the place where we educate the most students, where we produce the most research, where we touch the most aspects of society, but it's also the heart in, in terms of the caring and in terms of our responsibility to you know, have your children come into the university and work with them, whether it's our faculty, whether it's our staff, our advisors. We take this incredibly seriously. And I'm really excited today because, in this moment, because as you know, we have a mostly new chancellor, um, not someone new to KU, um, and certainly not someone new to higher education or new to administration, but um, new for us as our chancellor here on the Lawrence campus, and it's incredibly exciting. I've spent some of my academic career in medical schools, and there's something really important about the ways in which a medical school adds a tremendous amount of opportunities and really kind of student experience to a university. And there are times when the Lawrence and the medical school campuses have felt really far away and a lot more than, than 45 miles. And this is a, a great opportunity for our campus, for students who are interested in pre-med, for students who are interested in, in a wide range of careers that can connect to the medical school campus. So it's really a tremendous opportunity. And Chancellor Gerard is also an incredibly thoughtful and impassioned uh, educator. And one of the best, you know, I've only known him a short time, but one of the best listeners I've ever met. You have a real sense when you're talking to him that he cares about what you're saying, that he's thinking about it and that the way that he leads the university is really about the people that are here. And that's one of my favorite things about being at KU and being at Kansas. Um, you, might, you might have guessed I'm not from Kansas. I, don't, uh, I still have my New Jersey accent that I try to beat out of me, but it still comes out every now and then. But what I've really appreciated here are the people and the way we treat each other, the way that we're a family here, and the way that our chancellor embodies those values and the way that you'll feel that as you get a chance to hear from him. So thank you for being here today, and I'm really excited to uh, hear what he has to say. Great. Thank you, Carl. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for uh, being here. This is, as you know, the first time we've done the full-blown Crimson and Blue Day, and we got an incredible response. We're really excited to have you all here, and hopefully you're having a chance to do a sampling of lots of different parts of, of the campus. Uh, and Roy, as you just heard Dean Leshway talk about, the, the college um, really represents almost 50% of our campus in terms of number of students and faculty. It's, it, it really is a very all-encompassing college um, uh, and plays a critical role in what we do in many, many different ways. Uh, they asked me to talk just a little bit about pre-medical education, uh, which I'm happy to do. and I. Uh, as you heard, came from the medical center side, and I see one of my colleagues, Donna Peck, sitting back there from the medical center. Um, and really spent 23 years at KU Medical Center. I'm actually from the West Coast, uh, like Carl. I'm not a Kansas native, but we've been here for 23 years. Um, and, and in my roles at the medical center, I had an opportunity to serve in, in many different capacities, including uh, uh, interim dean of the School of Medicine for a year before I became executive vice chancellor. So. Um, 
But as executive vice chancellor, I also had an opportunity to work very closely with our schools of nursing and health professions. And so I would encourage you to think more broadly than even just medicine as you think about a healthcare career, that there are many, many elements to healthcare um, and, and to keep your, your, uh, your options open and as you think about what that might be. Very specifically for medicine, um, KU has the only school of medicine in the state of Kansas. Uh, we actually have three campuses for that school. Uh, one in Kansas City, uh, which is our main campus, but we have a satellite campus in Wichita, which we've had for 40 years, and it's very community-based, uh, meaning it works uh, at the medical center in Kansas City. We work with KU Hospital, which is a tertiary high-level referral academic institution. In Wichita, we work with two very strong private hospitals down there that are great partners and a lot of uh, volunteer faculty in the community. And then we have our newest campus, which is in Salina. Um, and uh, we just founded that in 2011, and it's the smallest four-year campus in the world <coughs> with, with uh, eight students per year for four years of medical school. And technology is really what allows us to do a lot of these things. We have similar programs in nursing and, and others where you can, you can deliver a lot of the information electronically and then have uh, teams on the ground that really help deliver the practical aspects of that. Uh, and really the focus and the reason for that Salina campus is to really address some of the workforce needs of the state of Kansas. Um, we currently nationally, uh, from just a physician perspective, are, are down probably somewhere between 50 to 70,000 physicians from what we should be given, given the demand of the population. Um, and that's particularly acute in rural areas uh, and in urban cores. And so if you happen to live in Johnson County, trust me, you have enough doctors. Um, but actually, if you live in downtown Kansas City, Kansas, or downtown Kansas City, Missouri, that's probably not the case. And if you live in Liberal, I promise you that's not the case. In fact, 90 of the 105 counties in the state of Kansas are underserved from, from a healthcare perspective. So, so we know we have a real distribution problem as much as a numbers problem, and, and that's really been the focus of both, both Wichita and uh, Salina is to really help educate in those parts of the state and with the hope that the workforce will stay locally ultimately when they, when they start their practices. Um, we're also, because we're the only medical school in the state, take very seriously our mission to the state. And so our medical school class, uh, it fluctuates a little bit, but it's typically between 88 to 92 percent Kansans. Um, so while we get several thousand applications for 211 slots, almost all those go to, to Kansans um, to, to help meet that need, recognizing that people from the state are much more likely to stay in the state. Um, and so as, as Carl said, having that connectivity to the greater university is extremely helpful in a lot of ways. Um, certainly uh, it facilitates gaining experiences as you go through an undergraduate education to gain experiences with, with medical school and potentially in any of those campuses, um, both for clinical experiences but also research experiences. Um, and, and that really translates to, to well over a third of the class uh, at any given time are KU graduates. A uh, third of the medical school class are KU graduates. Uh, but it's also really important for us for, as a university because some of the collaborative research that, that can occur um, is, is really helpful and we're leveraging more and more every day. Uh, we have a very strong nationally ranked cancer program and we have some of the best medicinal chemists and pharmacists in Lawrence, which is ranked intermittently one or two in the United States for research and drug development, to link that with actually a delivery platform in, a, in an academic medical center is very, very powerful. Um, and so it, it really, for the university as a whole, is, is tremendous for our research programs, uh, for our faculty, and subsequently for the student experiences that grow out of that. Um, so Running the traps on a pre-medical education is, is important. Understanding how to do it and getting advice along the way is certainly very important. And we, we have a number of programs here focused very much on that for students who, who are least reasonably certain that that's what they want to do. Uh, we have a, a, a suggested curriculum specifically for that. We have advisors for that. We have a pre-medical society that gets together of students with advisors um, to work on things and create opportunities. We have outreach 
and community-based uh, programs to get volunteer experience. We have uh, strong pathways to get research experience, all of which are really important when you're going into that uh, process to apply for medical school. Typically, what medical schools look for are not necessarily science majors. What they're looking for is a well-rounded student who has met all the science prerequisites. And so um, it, it's, it's, uh, it's a mistake to think that you have to be a biology major to go to medical school. It doesn't hurt to be a biology major to go to medical school, but, but you can meet the medical school criteria and still have any of a number of different um, um, degrees and or minors. And, and uh, those are elements that really create, in our opinion, a well-rounded student, as well as experiences, study abroad experiences, community service experiences, just in general life experiences, and then some time in some clinical experiences. So shadowing or doing uh, rotations in emergency rooms or hospitals or offices so that you know actually what you're getting yourself into. Um, people kind of have an idea of what it is to be in medicine, but it's usually not what you think it is. And so it's really important to get that real life experience and to make sure that it's something that, that you really do want to pursue because it's not an easy road. It's a great and very rewarding one, but it's certainly not for everybody. So, so it's really important to get that experience as well. And, and that's certainly what admissions committees look at. There is a, an entrance exam to medical schools called the MCAT. We do a review course here for students to, to help prepare for that, uh, to, to, score on, to score well on that. That's certainly one of the key admissions criteria. Uh, for most medical schools and again it's just something that if, if if you're going to go down that path having a community who's on that same track is extremely helpful um, and, and having advisors who've, who've been down this path and most importantly have the connections to, to get you plugged into uh, the opportunities to really to have the best experience possible. Um, so I we 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 view this as a very important part of what we do as a university. And it's not just for medicine, we have it for other pathways as well, but it, this is one that actually is quite robust and very successful. Um, and and uh, we have others who can speak even in more detail than I can about it, but it's, it's having been on the receiving end of it, it's a great pipeline uh, for us and, and the students that come to the medical center from KU are extraordinarily well prepared um, to, to be successful once they get there. Uh, and so I've got some time to take some questions. Is that, where'd Carl go? Is that all right? Good. Anybody have any questions for me? I was trying to move forward. That's all right. <laughs> Is that okay? Do we have some yeah, time? No, no, okay, no, okay. No, yeah. I, yes. So the question was, do you take a research opportunity before a, a uh, outreach opportunity, uh, and which is more important? And, and I wouldn't say that either is more important. Uh, I think both are important, and I think over the course of a undergraduate career, you have time to do both. Um, I would say with, with both, um, you know, the goal is not to do it to build your resume. The goal is to do it to gain the experience. And so if you're going to do it, really do it. If you're, if you're going to do a research experience, you don't just want to spend a day of, a month washing glassware in a lab, you want to actually engage in the research process and understand how it works and how you think about setting up experiments. Same as with outreach. If you're going to get engaged, I would recommend instead of engaging with five different things, pick one and get really involved. Um, and, and it's really that depth of that experience I think is most valuable, both for you to grow, but also as, as when you're sitting in an interview and they say, tell me about this experience, you can really speak to it in depth and because you know it. Um, and I, th I think that's what's most important. But I really think you have time for both. It's a great question. Any physicians in the crowd? Uh, well, okay. <laughs> Well, certainly any of the sciences will work, but actually there's history majors, there's anthropology. I, I mean, it truly can be almost anything. Um, often they'll have a minor in one of the sciences um, so, that, so that you definitely have that exposure. Um, and, and you still need to get through organic chemistry and all the, the, the prereqs, but, um, uh, but it, it really, 
there is no limit on what they can be. Um, so, you know, it ought to be what you're passionate about. Um, and you can still do that and, and get that experience that you need and the classes that you need to meet that. The question is, if you, even if you are a biology major, is, is it worth having a minor in something else? And um, you know, I, I th we've we've uh, in the redesign of our core curriculum a few years ago, we increased a lot of flexibility in the courses that you can take to meet certain requirements. And I think that really has elevated the opportunity to do effectively do minors. Um, and um, you know, I, I, I think it's important. I think it's important to study outside whatever your specific focus is. And if you happen to be on the science side, then that, in my mind, is ideally a non-science area. And it might be a language. Um, you know, there's clearly, uh, in, in our world, if you happen to be fluent in Spanish, that is a huge advantage. Um, and so there, there are things like that you can think about as well as to how it might apply to what you want to do in the future. Yeah. Do you have any recommendations on how to go about uh, shadowing? Yes. So, well, we have an office that coordinates that, uh, both here and at the medical center in Kansas City. Um, and we, they, they also not only set up experiences, but set up research opportunities as well. Because um, that can be a challenge sometimes, unless you have a family friend or somebody who's willing to take you on. So we've tried to build those pipelines in so that, that we can uh, hardwire that um, as people express interest. Now it's gotten a little more complicated. You can't just show up and walk into an operating room anymore. Um, you, you actually, yeah, you have to have your shots. Yeah, you have to go through HIPAA training. You have to have, there's a whole set of things you have to do before you can walk in the door now. So we, we have to be much more organized than we used to be. You know, if you, if you think about uh, what the curriculum is going to be, you know, there's a lot of physiology, there's pharmacology, um, uh, genetics are all things that, that are really coming to the fore within medicine right now, Gen genetics being a big one. Uh, as we move into an, a world of what we call precision medicine, which is really understanding somebody's genetic profile or actually perhaps the cancer's profile and, and tailoring drug therapy off of that or even custom designing drugs off of that uh, is a whole, that's really the direction that medicine is headed right now and, and some baseline experience in that probably would be pretty helpful. It's a good question. Well, thank you all for your attention. It's a great packed room. We, we found, we managed to find one of the oldest classrooms on campus to have this meeting <laughs> in. <laughs> <laughs> right? I, I've had to look for chalk before. <laughs> <laughs> like, really? That's not what it's really like. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the only one that was empty, apparently. <laughs> no, but we're delighted to welcome you to KU. We hope you have a great day. Please feel free to come back anytime uh, and, and tour some more and see other parts of the campus that you didn't get a chance to see uh, and take full advantage of it. We, we'd love to see you here. <laughs>